What is up, YouTube? It is time to wrap up the Orcs tier list! I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. If you have been following Reddit or any of the Facebook groups for Warhammer, you may know that essentially the entire Orc Codex got leaked. And it got leaked on the app, and now there's all these pictures and leaks. And I'm going to be super excited to review the Orcs 9th Edition Codex. At first, I was really dismayed because there's a lot of changes. It feels more like a rework than a power creep, but after reviewing the Codex, I think there's a lot, a lot of good stuff in the new Orc Codex. I think overall it is a power creep, and overall it's a change, but I think the similar styles of play will still be in effect. We'll just have a different bag of tricks as opposed to the old bag of tricks. All right, so now it's time to wrap up all of the Lords of War and the Flyers for the Orc Army. Now, the Orc 8th Edition Codex in the current 9th Edition of Warhammer, the Lords of War are sort of a mixed bag. There's one or two that see play. Honestly, we don't really have a lot of choices. We just have four. And as of late, they see fringe play. And as opposed to the Flyers, which see a heavy play lords of war are a little bit of a disappointment however they do see play and i am going to rank them you shouldn't be i always say don't be discouraged to not play something because i say so you should always have fun collect the minis that you want and ultimately warhammer is about fun i know that this channel is for people who want to get into competitive play but you know why do we even play competitively it's to have fun right and ultimately it's just a game so do what you like to do Use the models that you like at the end of the day. This, again, is my personal opinion and my analysis of the uh, list that I commonly see on Beast Coast pairings. So let's uh, jump right in. Let's first get into all of the flyers. So the first flyer that I'm going to go into is the Burnabama. So the Burnabama is absolutely lit. It is one of the best units in the Orc Arsenal. So the Burn Obama, the reason why it's so damn good is because it has access to a stratagem that you, lets you blow it up at the end of its movement phase. Not only that, but the Burn Obama, when it explodes, deals mortal wounds to anything within 6 inches of it. So, let's say you go first, you just supersonic this onto your opponent's side of the field where they have a lot of infantry or they just have a lot of units clumped up you just flying head you drop a bomb and then you flying headbutt this thing you're gonna deal a crazy amount of mortal wounds and that's the reason why you see burn obama's taken in so many lists whether it's vehicles or boy spam burn obama's are seen a lot in competitive play now with flyers yes they do suffer from the fact that they're not very useful for scoring objectives besides engage on all front which is still very useful they cannot actually hold objectives but the amount of damage that the burn obama does on its own i would strongly put it in the s tier and the amount of competitive play that i see it getting it's definitely an s tier unit for that reason all right jumping into the blitz obama the blitz obama is not quite as common in competitive play but still very common and while it does lose the flying headbutt stratagem and where you basically can blow it up and deal a lot of mortal wounds because the Blitz Obama does not deal as many mortal wounds when it blows up, it is still a great choice in lists where, you know, you you really just don't think you're going to be up against many people who are castling. It still has a decent bomb dropping. In terms of its utility, definitely a lot lower than the Burn Obama. For that reason, I put it in the A tier. There's a lot of lists that run both the Blitz Obama and the Burn Obama just because they don't want the Burn Obamas. If they have two Burn Obamas, they don't want to get one focus down and have it blow up all over your own army. I think Blitz Obama is still overall a decent choice in your army. For that reason, I would put it at an A tier. Now, Daka Jets. Daka Jets, I actually feel, are pretty underrated. I would put it actually at an A tier. I think Daka Jets uh, haven't seen much play in competitive lists, but me personally, I feel like they have a lot of utility in the fact that now 
with Admech and um, well, Drukari are usually in their what are those things called? Those transports. But now with a lot of more squishier units, I mean the Dakajet, it has minus one AP and has a lot of shots hitting on four plus. Plus, if your death skulls, you get re rolls and whatnot. I feel like the Dakajet should see some more play. Um, it's definitely more relevant in the current meta with a lot of more squishy units uh, running around and with just the sheer volume of fire that the Dakajet has. Uh, for that reason, I put it in the A tier. Now, it is pretty easy to blow up, not going to lie, because, once again, all flyers don't get uh, benefits of the... What is that terrain called? The the terrain that's a wall. I don't know why I cannot remember that for right now. But overall, I think that it it's a decent unit. Um, the times that I've used it, it's definitely made up its point cost. Like, it can usually take out a squad of infantry. It can just zoom into the back line and easily uh, take out just those weak, weak units that opponents often use to hold the backfield objective. So for that reason, I put the Dekajet at an A tier. Now, the Wasbomb Blastajet, I feel, is almost the opposite end of the Flyers. It's a little too expensive for what it does, and I find that it just is too inconsistent in what it does. Now, with Burn Obamas, you have a very consistent way of dealing mortal wounds. With Blitz Obamas even, you have a way of dealing mortal wounds. And with the Dakajet, just the sheer firepower of this Dakajet, it's going to definitely do some damage. But the but the Wasbomb Blastajet, I find for its point cost, it, it has a hard time paying for its own point cost. And there are games where it does dwell, but there's also other games where I find that it just does absolutely nothing. It is interesting that it can take a custom force field, but I find that having a custom force field on the Waz Bomb doesn't do a whole lot. It's really hard for infantry and the ground troops to keep up with flyers. So the custom force field after turn one really doesn't do much. And while it does have the plus one to its smash -a guns on the Waz Bomb, I just find it's too inconsistent. And for that reason, I put it in the B tier. If it was cheaper, then I think it would see more play, but for its current point cost, I think you're just better off getting regular smash guns that are on the ground than having the Wasbomb Blaster Jet. Now, moving on to some more fun stuff, we have the Kill Tanks. Now, Kill Tanks, I think, are actually decent. I think they're like at the tip of the, the bottom of the A, maybe the beginning of the B tier. Uh, I'll just put it A tier because orcs are awesome. But Kill Tanks, honestly, uh, they do see competitive play. There's a player named Colin K who runs three Kill Tanks all the time, and he does quite well in with his list. He puts them as Blood Axes so that they don't have the problem of getting touched and not being able to do anything, so he can basically fall back and shoot or charge. Kill Tanks also with the, um, I believe, the Giga Bursta, you have a lot of shots. You have 30 shots, and with Daka, you essentially are getting 10% more, sh sorry, 15% more shots, so you're getting about 5 more shots on average, and orcs, we love getting extra shots, so this thing can definitely wrap some stuff off the table. Now, because it's a Lord of War, it does have trouble getting shot off the board, and realistically, it does have a healing mechanism, but that's not going to do a whole lot. There's so much, so much damage now, it's just terrible, terrible damage, it reminds me of Dustin Bowder. Uh, designing for StarCraft 2 where he just wanted everything to have terrible damage. Maybe that's what Games Workshop's going for. So for those reasons, Kill Tank, uh, it, it's really like a B, the top of the B tier. I'll just put it at the bottom of the A tier because Orcs are awesome. And it's just a fantastic model. But realistically, you're really going to have to build lists around the Kill Tank. Now, there is the buff to detachments where they get I believe it's only minus one command point to have a lord, a single Lord of War. So I think that will definitely make this a more interesting choice and make lists more fun because now maybe you can take a kill tank. We'll see how that really affects the gameplay going forward, especially with the new codex. But in the current 8th edition or codex, I would say kill tank is the 8th tier. All right, now custom stompa. Custom Stompa, I would put in b above the Wasbomb. So Custom Stompa has seen some play in competitive. 
Uh, it's just outshined by the regular Stompa, in my opinion. Uh, regular Stompa is a little bit more, but it's a little more blasty, a little more DAC, a little more killy. So for that reason, I put the the Custom Stompa at the B tier. Now, Custom Stompa, it's very expensive for its point cost. I seldom find that it pays for its point cost. It's like 800 points. You're gonna have to kill a lot of things with it for it to pay its points. And if the opponent goes gets the jump on you, you it doesn't get the benefit of um, well, I can't remember what it is, but it, it doesn't get cover from line of sight. So they could just wrap this thing off the table, and that's not a good time because this is literally, in a 2,000-point game, going to be more than half your points. So for that reason, Custom Stompa, I put it in the B tier. Now the regular Stompa, I would put it actually uh, somewhere. It's on the same level as the Kill Tank. Actually, maybe put the Dakajet a bit behind. The Stompa, there's a list with a Stompa where you, you get a Stompa and a bunch of boys, and essentially the Stompa is like a big cannon, and it just sits on an objective and tries to blast the opponent off the other objectives. And that list was seeing some success for sure. I'm not too up-to-date on the Adbeck meta right now, so I'm not sure if that's seeing much play as of late. But the Stompa was seeing some use in competitive lists, and those lists were actually doing quite well. So I would put the Stompa in the A tier. It is one of those units that are super cool, but it's also very expensive. So I think that earlier in the year, like January, February, March, Stompa lists were doing well. But with the Drukari coming out and with Admech, it's slowly fallen off. But still, in relation to the other models, I think it's viable. And uh, whoops, we'll see what changes in the 9th edition codex has in store for the Stompa. Now, the the Gigantum Squigoff honestly is D tier. It's just not. It's just not good. It has a lot of wounds, but it doesn't. It's not super killy. It's not that great in melee. It's just too expensive for what it does. It's overcosted and. You never see this thing in competitive play. It's also very expensive to buy from Fork World, so you don't even see many casual players with it. Granted, it's a sick model. I love the model. All the Orc models are super awesome. But just in competitive play, you're not going to see much of this, the Gargantum Squigoff. It's just very expensive, and it has like very similar stat line to a regular Squigoff. So why would you invest the extra points to have extra wounds? Yes, in theory, it makes sense. But once again, with the current state of like everything having flat damage plus d6 or d3 extra damage there's just so much damage that you don't want to invest so many points into single units again that's case by case but in general you're better off not taking the gargantium squig off in your list if you're tailoring it to competitive play that's pretty much it for the lords of war and the flyers there's clear winners in the lords of war and flyers and there's one clear loser, which is the Gargantum Squigoff. And there's some units that see some flexible play here and there. I feel that the Orc Flyers and the Lords of War are quite interesting. And going forward, I'm really excited to see what we'll see in 9th edition competitive play with these units. I am super excited for that as well. Overall, like I say though, these are my opinions and my analysis. I strongly recommend everything everyone to do their own analysis and play their own games the only way that the meta will develop and that the orcs can see more competitive play is more players trying different things out and finding out cool strategies and tips and tricks that they can share with other orcs so that's it for flyers and lords of war thanks for watching really appreciate all of y'all this channel has been growing a lot faster than i ever imagined I will be posting, my next video will be an interview that I did with Rich Kilton, the old war boss himself. I'm going to be releasing that ASAP. And although that interview is tailored to 8th, I think you'll find Rich Kilton's, just the way that he thinks about the game, his strategy, his tips, and his general orc strategy and his cunningness may rub off on you. And I think you'll even find it to be useful in the coming edition as well. Plus, his love of the game is just infectious. So stay tuned for that interview, which is the next video. After that, we're going to slowly dive deep into the 9th edition or Codex 
if you have your opinions definitely post them down below comment below if you enjoy the content i really appreciate everyone that subs subscribes and i even appreciate everyone who comments below in the video so thanks for watching keep those dice rolling and as always have a great day